Glasgow. Everyone knows Celtic Park and Ibrox and even Hampden Park. But have any of you heard of Cathkin Park? A stadium with a capacity of over 50,000, this was once one of the most prominent stadiums in all of Scotland. It's hosted cup finals and international fixtures, but today it's abandoned. The story behind it is pretty amazing, so I'm absolutely buzzing to check it out. Please remember to like this video and subscribe if you're new. I'm gonna start walking into Cathkin Park, but let me tell you how I got the idea to do this video. It was from two comments that were left on my Hamden Park video. I will display them on screen just now. So thanks to the following people for the tip. I'm always happy to create videos for you guys for suggestions that you have or for things that you wanna see. I'm here today because of these two people, so don't be shy and get your suggestions down in the comments. And who knows, your suggestion might be on this very screen one day. Absolutely amazing to think that a stadium of 50,000 once stood here on this very site. Wow, look at this. I obviously will tell you more about the history of the place, but on first impressions, you can imagine if it wasn't such a nice sunny day, it would be pretty spooky around here. You can see the old barriers where people would have stood back in the day, the red barriers. Let's go take a closer look. Is where the old terraces would have been. Now completely overgrown, there's sections all the way around that you could still kind of go and sit on, but you can see that in between each one there are just these forested areas that are obviously fairly impenetrable, so I don't think we'll be going far around here, but these are the barriers where people would have stood and watched cup finals, international fixtures, as well as other club games, which we'll come on to later on. The stadium itself was actually used at first in 1884 uh, for Queen's Park, who obviously now play in Hampden Park. The first ever game that was played here in the 1800s was a drab nil-nil draw between Queen's Park and Dumbarton. Obviously, like I said, Queen's Park do now play in Hampden Park, which I won't go over too much. You can see that in another video. Um, which I'll link down below. I've covered a bit of their history, so uh, yeah, be sure to check that out. Right, I'm gonna try and make it from round here. Oh, I've just seen something move in the bush, that's not good. I'm gonna try and make it from this section here to that one round there, and then we'll see if we can get even further, but to get round there, I'm gonna have to bowl through this section, so we'll see how we get on. Let's go. What? Unreal to think that this was once a huge stadium, one of the biggest, most famous, most prominent in all of Scotland. But now look at this, absolutely amazing stuff. I'm so glad that I got the recommendation to come here. Right, where do we go from here then? Let's get underneath this shit. Oh, God. Oh. Cobwebs all over my legs, flies in my face. This is not good. Ah, uh, this is not good. But here we go. Uh. Slug. Ah, uh. grim. We've made it round to another section of the stadium here. If you can even call it that anymore. Look at this. So as I touched on earlier, regular cup finals and international games have been played here. The most famous of all was the Championship of the World. A match that now doesn't happen anymore, but would make sense to bring back. I think it's a great sounding competition. And it's the winners of the FA Cup in England against the winners of the Scottish Cup, obviously in Scotland. And when it was played here, Scottish side Renton went on to win 4-1 against the Baggies, West Brom. So look at this, even teams like West Brom have played kind of major cup finals here. Quite amazing. 
And to prove the stature of the stadium that once stood here, the first ever Old Firm Cup Final was played here. So the first ever Cup Final between Celtic and Rangers was played at this very site. And that was in 1899. Unbelievable. And to prove how long ago that was, there would have been no watching it on TV because the TV was still 28 years away from its birth, from its invention. Look at that, I love that they've still got the terraces and the barriers and the steps. But it's all been overgrown by the forest. Obviously that would have all connected. Would have all connected one day, not anymore. Let's find a nice little spot on this terrace outlooking the pitch. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the teams that used to play here. Just trying to find a clean one to sit on. I think this one will do. So obviously I mentioned Queen's Park and they left this site in 1903 to move across to what is now Hampden Park. However, when they left, a new team moved in who became synonymous with this place. After a disagreement over the takeover fee, a team called Third Lanark moved in and completely rebuilt the place into what it was a 50,000 seater stadium. I say seater, but everyone back then stood, so the terraces would have been packed with 50,000 people. Anyway, more on the club themselves. They were founded in 1872 out of the Third Lanarkshire Rifle Volunteers. They were a founding member of the Scottish League in 1890 and even won the top division of Scottish football in 1904. Two Scottish Cups, two Division II titles, four Glasgow Cups, as well as numerous other charity Cups, probably makes this team who had disbanded 50 to 60 years ago more successful than most teams that currently compete in Scotland's top tier. Sadly, fraud and dodgy runnings of the club brought it to its knees and it faced liquidation in 1967. Who knows, without that, could we have seen a three horse race in Scotland for the title every year between Rangers, Celtic and Third Lanark. Obviously these days it's usually just a two horse race or in recent years, more of a one horse race. Imagine seeing a crop of young talent coming through the ranks here or even seeing the likes of Barcelona, AC Milan or Bayern Munich come on a European night. A happy ending to their story though, in 2008 an amateur side was born out of the ether of the past. Currently playing in the Central Scottish Amateur Football League, Third Lanark AFC were born in 2008. When you'd have told the fans of Third Lanark when they were winning titles and cups and international fixtures were being played here that eventually it would be abandoned in 50-60 years, they probably wouldn't have believed you. As big as the demise was of their predecessors, can they have a meteoric rise in their next 50 to 60 years? I do hope so, and hopefully I can go and watch them play once football restarts properly here in Scotland. What a beautiful, sunny Sunday morning this is. At an abandoned pitch. I hope you've learned a little something today about what used to stand here. Obviously it used to be a huge stadium, whereas now it's getting overgrown and overtaken by nature. I hope you've also learned also about Third Lanark who have won the Scottish title, have won Scottish Cups. A team that nowadays if it had those achievements would be playing in Europe so quite amazing really and uh, something that more people should know more about. So if you're from Scotland, if you're from the UK, it really is a tremendous story and I would really appreciate if you could share this video with somebody. Copy that link Flick it across to your mates in a WhatsApp. It'd really help me out. Please remember to like this video as well. Comment, subscribe if you're new. I'm gonna leave you today with a beautiful time lapse of this place. I really do appreciate you watching. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next one.